Hi guys, Dan Saad, Saad Metal Recycling. Just have a review of 2022 and an outlook for 2023. You know, an overcast day like this, you wouldn't think would be a great day for this, but the fog, drizzle, and uncertainty of it all really sums up everything. At the end of 2021, we thought we had the most unpredictable roller coaster ride year, but we didn't know what 2022 had in store for us. This year has had extreme volatility, and sometimes looking back can give us some perspective on what we can expect for 2023. So at the end of 2021, we had the supply chain mess that obviously caused that year that filtered over. We had the war in Ukraine that we would have thought would have kind of been over before now, but is still dragging on. Obviously the constant labor market tightness and the lack of being able to get metals impacted everyone on every angle. So those are all factors that played into the 2022 unpredictability. Sometimes a lot, we don't have the perspective of being able to look back and remember what happened because it's, we get so used to what's happening currently. But if we look back in 2022, we had some amazing volatility and hit some levels that we may not see for a while and had not seen pre-2008. Um, in steel, let's look at this. So number one bushling started the year last year at 505 a ton. It went over $700 a ton and we ended the year November 330, probably up a little to 350, 360 by the end of this year. That's an amazing spread by any circumstances. The automotive um, uncertainty with supply chain and factories in and out really impacted bushling a lot more than other metals. But that, that was just an amazing level of volatility that we had not seen. In HMS number one, it was a little more muted. Started the year at 395. It will probably end up 320, 330, probably closer to 320, with a peak of over $500 early in 2022. Again, not as volatile as the bushling, but a lot of volatility within a calendar year. So that's kind of a, an outlook of what happened last year. And you can see we've tailed down and have maybe hit the bottom on the steel and bouncing back in December, which is a good sign for 2023. Copper was the story of the dollar and vice versa. Also the China COVID. Those are the two big themes behind copper this year. Copper started the year at 436, got all the way up near five bucks, and now we're back into the 380 range. If you look at the track of the dollar over the past year, you'll see similar peaks and valleys, almost trading each other high and low each turn. Copper also, again, as I mentioned, the China shutdown and how they've handled COVID so much differently than us has really created all kinds of havoc in the copper price. And that's what we see continuing until there's some clarity on that. So that unfortunately will probably tie together. The dollar, as I said, between 96 and 115 this year, huge spread, and it's kind of correlated to where copper is. So while steel and copper had a similar trajectory of a early year, mid-year peak, and then back down below the beginning of the year, Aluminum and nickel took a different tact. They ba both basically are in the same spot they were at the beginning of the year with a huge spike mid-March. So aluminum started the year around 2,600. It's now around 2,500 a ton. For perspective, right around $1.12, $1.13. So the impacts there were the Ukraine war, which lasted so much longer, and not just that, the impact of Russia and how they are with aluminum and the uncertainty around sanctions. That was a big player in aluminum that really hit aluminum and somewhat nickel much more than the other metals in the complex. So that was a big factor that the other metals didn't have. So what we saw, as I said, was the, uh, the aluminum starting at 2600, kind of ending at 25, but a huge spike up um, in March. Nickel's been a basket case this year. Going from $20,000 a ton at the beginning of the year to $29,000 now in that range doesn't tell the whole story. There was a period in March, kind of unprecedented move, 
where sales were just ignored and canceled. Uh, short squeezes, lots of plays on the market that had nothing to do with supply and demand really impacted nickel and the market really became untradeable for a period of time. And in a sense, uh, stainless steel and other alloys, the, the market isn't even reacting to where the nickel price is being traded. So nickel really was the tough one on the complex this year. Again, um, if you look at it, it's up 50% from the beginning of the year, but there were so many things in between that really, it doesn't tell the story of how nuts of a year it was. We actually did a dumpster talk in the early part of the year, maybe even late 2021, talking about the 2007 nonsense that happened with nickel and how it spiked to, a, to an unsustainable point. Thinking it was a hypothetical, we got to those levels this year and it was kind of crazy. So that's one where we have no idea what's going on. There's very little clarity on that. And that's something that we'll look back on and say, probably study what happened in this period. So understanding our perspective and looking ahead, there's going to be specifics in each metals area that are going to cause impact in 2023. For steel, it's going to be the increased production out of China. It's going to be the mills that are coming online here and the impact of that. For copper, it's going to be, did COVID ever end? Has it ended? May it end? Will there be another one? and how China impacts that. That'll be that factor. For aluminum, it's gonna be the increase of extruders. How many extruders um, are gonna be coming online? Is there an increase in secondary metal um, mills and refineries? Those are gonna be the things that are gonna impact that. For nickel, who knows? That whole thing is up in the air. But beyond that, there's gonna be three major factors, I believe, that are gonna dominate everything. It's gonna be the Fed, it's gonna be the dollar, and it's gonna be how we handle ESG. So briefly, the first and foremost always with every business in 2023 is gonna be the Fed. If you look out at the chart, we've gone from very nearly free money to 4% Fed's funds rate in a very short amount of time. So everyone running on a line of credit, everything becomes more expensive investment becomes more expensive. That's necessarily going to slow things down. Not only has it increased, but if you go back historically, even back to the 80 Volcker era, the steepness of which, which this climb has had to happen and may continue to need to happen is, going, is unprecedented, really. So it's not just the rate that's gone up, it's the steepness that has gone up at the same time. It's, it's caused such an impact and shock to the market that it will have a massive impact in 2023. That's unavoidable. If the Fed slows it down and sits on it for a while, that will be probably helpful to the overall environment. I can't see coming down for a long time because the inflation rate is definitely gonna have to come down for that to happen. So just like, we couldn't fight the Fed when it was free money and we should have rolled with that right now. You just got to roll with what the interest rate levels are and understand the impact on the economy. That's unavoidable. Second's the dollar. As I mentioned earlier with copper and really across all metals, even with steel in areas that have heavy export presence like the East Coast of the United States going out to Turkey, the metal exchange, the dollar exchange is huge. So the year started at 96, got to 115, now we're around 105. If it's closer to 115, it's gonna be a tough year for all of us. If it's closer to 96, it's gonna be a great year. Those are two factors that we know out of the gate. I think the third wild card, especially with a tighter Congress that's gonna be you know, very hard to control by anyone, is gonna be how we handle ESG and those promises and commitments. If we are serious about going forward on them, it's gonna naturally necessitate more metals and higher prices for metals. So nickel, especially with batteries, copper and aluminum with the grid and all the necessary changes, all those things are necessarily gonna be lifted up or at least held at the same high level they are with that commitment. If we start to see chipping away at some of the ESG commitments, 
some of the uh, regulations and things like that, that is definitely going to have a downward pressure that I don't think we're estimating or even thinking about pricing in. Because when economies become challenged here and across the world, priorities change. So that's something I think is going to be the big sleeper in this is how the tougher economy, we've only seen ESG in the environment of a really strong economy or at least zero interest rates. When you pull those things out, what is the impact of that? And then secondarily, what does that do to metals and the investment that's been made in metals? Those I think are the three big factors. So here's hoping for a great 2023, hoping we're not all in the dumpster like I am and that we do come out of it pretty good. The one thing we know is no matter what the conditions, We'll work hard and, uh, and fight through like we always do. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this outlook on 2023.